Well, hey guys, today I wanna to talk about something that is popping up everywhere. You cannot escape it. You can run, but you cannot hide from ChatGPT and AI. AI generated skincare routines. What in the science fiction? Yeah, you know those apps and quizzes that claim to give you a personalized, tailor-made skincare routine and they spit it out in nothing flat, like three seconds? Sounds amazing, right? I get it, like, let's be honest. It is very difficult to to nail down a good skincare routine given the ever-growing vast array of skincare products out there. Thousands upon thousands of just cleansers alone, let alone sunscreens, moisturizers, serums, toners, ampules, masks, the list goes on and on. It's, it's quite overwhelming, it'll have your head spinning. The harsh reality, however, is that AI-generated skincare routines, they're not all they're cracked up to be. They can have some serious limitations and they can backfire and potentially even cause skin health problems. In this video, Video, I'm going to explain how these tools work, what they get wrong, and why at the end of the day, if you have a skin health problem, you want to make sure to see a board certified dermatologist, not ChatGPT. So how do these AI skincare tools work? Most of these apps or devices will ask you to upload a selfie and complete a questionnaire, usually about your specific skin concerns. The AI then analyzes your skin tone, texture, any surface blemishes you might have using an algorithm trained on a specific data set. The algorithm is only as good as the data set that it was trained on. Sounds amazing, right? Quick, efficient, personalized, take all the guesswork out of things. If it sounds too good to be true, probably is. So what's the catch? First of all, AI does not have any medical context. It can only know your skin history. It can't provide you insight into if you may have a new developing or worsening background skin health problem like Rosé eczema, or allergies to specific ingredients. It doesn't ask you really specific questions about what medications you're taking or supplements, all of which are things that definitely can impact your skin in a variety of ways. And it really can't factor in things like hormonal changes or life stressors, life events. The second is that, in my opinion, AI oversimplifies and relies too much on skin type, which honestly is a thing that I feel like we need to get away from. As consumers, the, the whole dry, oily combination, just stop with all of that. That's what the AI algorithms are really focused on. And yeah, I'm not knocking it completely as far as oily, dry combination, those skin types, they kind of do have a role and can help to a certain extent in guiding skincare product selection, formulation. But in my opinion, they are over, overemphasized in marketing and skincare routine language. And it becomes difficult because that's what people search out. That's what people search out. So in other words, internet content creation becomes centered around those search terms in order to get people the right information that they need. But classifying your skin as just oily or dry or combination doesn't really capture the complexity of your skin health needs as an individual. Like oily skin for one person may benefit from certain products that perhaps are a bit more harsh to another person with oily skin. Not to mention, skin is dynamic. It changes with diet, with sleep, with the weather, seasonally, geographically, throughout your different life stages, with hormones, especially in women, with the menstrual cycle, with pregnancy, with menopause. I mean, it is, it's an ever-changing landscape. AI simply, at least at this point, doesn't adjust well to these nuances. Now, a critical point I want to highlight, I want to emphasize, that is not getting spoken about at all that really, really, really needs to be at the forefront of everyone's mind when they are considering entertaining AI for skincare needs. And that is AI algorithms are only as good as the data sets they are trained on. A data set that has historically always been small in content, unfortunately, are high quality dermatologic images of skin health issues, skin problems on deeper skin tones. And what this means for AI is that if it doesn't have a good number of images to be trained on, on those skin issues and deeper skin tones, how they appear, because they appear much differently. I've highlighted this wherever I can in my videos as it is relevant in the context. For example, seborrheic dermatitis looks very different on deeper skin tones compared to Caucasian.
Caucasian skin. So if the AI can't see that properly, it's not going to give accurate individualized information to you. This isn't just a skincare cosmetic shopping problem. This also boils down to the usage of AI and Chad GBT and healthcare and that the data sets going in, if they're limited in scope, the output is going to be limited in scope and could potentially not be appropriate for a lot of people. If AI can't analyze your skin properly because it wasn't trained on the right data set, it's not gonna be able to help you. On top of that, AI might just be trained to push products that are not necessarily great or helpful. They might just be getting that input because those products are overly sponsored, overly advertised, or they just might not be right for your skin. Like I played around with ChatGPT and just to see what it spits out as far as different skincare routines. And a lot of times it will recommend so many different products that I as a dermatologist would never recommend people go all in on for sure. A serum, a toner, an ampule, an eye cream. I mean, just think about the volume of absurd over the top skincare routines on TikTok that are primarily created while it may not be obvious to the consumer always, but are primarily created. These over the top like morning shed routines, don't even get me started. Those over the top routines are for entertainment purposes only. But if that is influencing the AI outputs because the AI is being trained um, algorithmically on this type of information the internet contains, well, there you go. And remember when it comes to your skincare routine, less is more. I'm all about the skincare minimalism because the more products you use, the greater the likelihood for irritation. If you're using AI, that's recommending products that are not right for you and you're using multiple, multiple products unnecessarily, the likelihood of irritation and skin problems is even greater. It causes a lot of redness, skin barrier damage, dryness, peeling. And for people with deeper skin tones, who again, the data sets are not that robust going in, the outputs that they get, they might take that information, build a skincare routine that ends up causing so much irritation, you have now post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, which can take a long time to fade. AI can't tell if your skin is burning, peeling, any of that. It can't really see or understand if you are having some sort of skin reaction in real time. So that being said, AI, it's not all bad. It definitely has its uses and can be a valuable tool depending on how it's used, right? When it comes to technology, technology can be used for evil or can be used for good. AI can be great for reminding you about your routines, habit tracking, and it may be useful for just gathering and collating different reviews on different skincare products so that you as a consumer have like a big picture view of what shoppers at large think about a given product before buying it, what shoppers at large say about how a product performed. I think that's really valuable, but I would not go to it for skin education, dermatology education, because it's going to be limited. In my opinion, AI is very useful for looking at trends as well. And I think that that can provide some very useful insight trends as far as skin issues that people deal with maybe seasonally just based on search volumes of what people are looking for. Expert guidance however still matters is very important and AI is not a replacement. Dermatologists are going to look at your skin in the context of your overall health taking into account your personal and family history as well as what medications dietary supplements you might be taking. They are actually going to get a real 3D look at your skin. They're in many cases going to actually touch your skin um, and feel things that are below the surface of the skin, like certain lumps, for example. They have the ability to look up close at your skin with a magnifying glass known as a dermatoscope and see things in a way that you can't see with just the naked eye. While dermatologists are not necessarily the experts on skincare formulation, like a cosmetic chemist would be, dermatologists do have a good understanding of how skincare ingredients interact with the skin and how they play a direct or indirect role in the development of certain skin problems, such as allergic contact dermatitis. Allergic contact dermatitis is a type of eczema that develops as a result of things that are coming in contact with the skin. But an AI algorithm might just recognize redness and recommend products to you that are perhaps good for redness, but if those products contain the ingredient you're allergic to and is causing 
causing the contact dermatitis, it's going to get worse. That's where a dermatologist would be able to step in and say, all right, let's take a step back, stop all of the over the top skincare, just keep it real simple, cleanser, moisturizer, sunscreen, very few allergens, here are some samples, and then you come back and things are suddenly better, then they do patch testing, they figure out the ingredient that you're allergic to. That's really the type of tailor-made routine, if you will, that uh, a dermatologist can offer that AI cannot. And only tailor-made in the fact that they're going to identify the ingredient that you cannot use, and they're gonna help guide you on how to look for that ingredient before buying a skincare product. Not only a skincare product, but hello, um, other things come in contact with our skin that could also contain that ingredient like household cleaners, for example. You know, your countertop spray may be breaking you out. Also, dermatologists do get a lot of hands-on training, treating patients with deeper skin tones, and they know that certain things a, look different, they know how to diagnose certain things in deeper skin tones, and they know that certain ingredients might cause irritation that leads to the development of skin problems that look a specific way in a deeper skin tone and therefore are the most qualified and going to be the most helpful in most cases for addressing specific skin health concerns in any skin tone. But as I said, deeper skin tones, the input to AI is going to be weaker given the lack historically of a good data set of images, high quality images. And don't even get me started on AI apps that check moles because yeah, your skin deserves more than a quick selfie scan. My advice, if you're gonna use AI, use it wisely. Like I said, technology can be used for good or it can be used for evil. <laughs> Lean into AI more just to get a global sense of if a specific face wash caused problems for a lot of people. Like did many people say, hey, this face wash dried out my skin and was super irritating. While that may not necessarily be the case for you, if there is a large input into AI of people saying that about a given cleanser and you have drier skin to begin with, yeah, you might want to avoid it. But I wouldn't necessarily go to AI to say, hey, build me a skincare routine. Or what serum should I use to get rid of this dark spot on my nose? Yeah, I would not use it in that way. AI is exciting. It has a potential to benefit skincare, skin health in a variety of ways, but it also has the potential if misused, used incorrectly, to backfire and cause problems. Let me know in the comments, have you used AI yourself for skincare? Care, skincare product shopping. How did it go? Did it backfire or did it make your life so much easier? I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If so, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye. Mm -hmm.